Well, so I'd like to read you some, some of the poems uh, from the Harlem Renaissance. Um, it was kind of a collaboration, you know, the musicians and the artists, the dancers, uh, that they all had with each other that inspired one another. Uh, I, I like this uh, Frank Marshall Davis poem. It kind of sums up, you know, what they called the Negro problem uh, back in the 1900s. Uh, and Frank Marshall Davis, you know, he had gone to college in Manhattan, and like a lot of college graduates, he got a job as a, a porter. And, you know, I remember, you know, not knowing much about what a porter was. And I grew up in Kansas City, Kansas, and there was a, an older man in my neighborhood, retired, always dressed very nicely, had spectacles on, and, and uh, he got the most respect in the whole neighborhood. He was maybe in the 70s or 80s. And uh, so I asked my father what he did, and my father said he was a porter, which was a very lofty thing to, to be. You know, you made a lot of money. And then, you know, maybe like in the 70s, uh, we moved. And then there was a, uh, maybe in 63, you know, maybe we moved, and there was another man in the neighborhood by 1960 who lived next door to us, and he was a porter. But he was a much younger man, and this was like in the 60s. And, and so I asked my father, was this guy, a, what kind of job did he have? And my father said, oh, he's just a porter. So just in a generation, you know, for an 80-year-old man who was a porter in the 1920s, it was a big deal. But in the 1960s, you know, there were a lot more opportunities. So it's just kind of funny. It took me years to find out, you know, what changed between being a porter in 1920 and being a porter in 1960. Uh, Frank Marshall Davis wrote, Giles Johnson had four college degrees, and he knew the why for of this and the wherefore of that. He could orate in Latin, cuss in Greek, and having learned such things, he died of starvation because he wouldn't teach and he couldn't porter. And that was what the problem was. You had those two things uh, at your disposal if you were going to have a, make, a, make a good living in those days. Uh, Langston Hughes wrote a poem called Dinner Guess Me uh, when he finally went to Harlem. And this poem talks a little bit about the split between the older generation, uh, uh, you know, Elaine Locke, uh, William Dubois, this first generation of, of free men that were born, and, and Langston Hughes, they were the, maybe the 20 year olds, and so we had these 40, 50 year old guys and the 20 year olds. Uh, he wrote, I know I am the Negro problem, being wined and dined, answering the usual questions that come to white mind, which seeks to merely to probe in a polite way the why and wherewithal of darkness USA, wondering how things got this way in current democratic night, murmuring gently over phrases Dubois, I'm so ashamed of being white. But the lobster is delicious, the wine is divine, in the center of attention at the table mind. To be a problem on Park Avenue at eight is not so bad. Solutions to the problem, of course, can wait. So he was kind of accusing this older generation of not really doing very much. You know, they were they like talking about the problem. They were writing books about the problem, uh, but this younger group was coming in, and so here's one of his poems that he talks about this new group of young poets and, and and young people coming in. We have tomorrow bright before us like a flame. Yesterday a night dawn thing, a sundown name, and dawn today broad arch above the road we came, we march. So he's kind of letting this older generation know that the young ones are coming in and we want to do something different. It's a more radical group uh, during the Harlem Renaissance. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play a song that's based on his most famous poem, uh, The Negro Speaks of Rivers. And he learned a lot of this history. He actually wrote this poem, he said, on, the, on a train or some transportation he was on. He had been visiting his father in Mexico. And he said his father wanted him to leave America, you know, go to Mexico, you know, you don't have to be black or white in Mexico. Uh, just just go there, because his father was an ambassador or something. Uh, he hadn't spent much time with his father. They didn't get along. And, but he wrote this poem, but it was after he had been exposed to the history of African Americans going back to Africa, but not just in Africa, in Russia, in Scotland, and Ireland, and all over the world. And so he came up with this poem to as a way of telling his father that he has more here in America, uh, being an African American, than he would have in Mexico, uh, being whatever whatever people thought he was, and he did. He used to go on boats and masquerade. He said as as a, a Hispanic person, uh, he would go on ships and get little jobs because he would just want to want to take it off. Sometimes he said, and just you know not be a black person anymore. Uh, but this was a point that he decided to leave it on. You know he was. Uh, he was embracing his history. 
So I put it to music. I've known rivers. I've known rivers. I've known rivers, ancient as the world, older than the flow of human blood through human veins. I've known rivers. I've known rivers. I've known rivers, ancient as the world, older than the flow of human blood through human veins. I built my hut near the Congo and it loved me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and to the pyramids and above them I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abel Lincoln went down to New Orleans. Went down to New Orleans. I've known rivers. I've known rivers, I've known rivers, ancient as the world, older than the flow of human blood through human veins. My soul has grown deep like the river, I've seen its muddy bosom go all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers. Ancient dusky river. I've known rivers. Ancient dusky river. My soul has run deep.